If you start to watch the vigil and decide that you don't really take to it, keep with it. It takes a very long time to get anywhere decent. But once the horror aspect really kicks in, boy does it deliver. I thought the bits that were good were very good, fantastic in fact, and I only wish I'd had the chance to see this on the big screen because it would have been amazing. It is currently on Netflix, which is where I watched it, and it's creepy enough to watch it on there. So this was released in 2019, I believe it was released in the UK in 2020, and it's directed by Keith Thomas and also written by Thomas. And stars basically Dave Davis. There are not many other characters um, or actors in this. He plays Yakov Ronan. And we do meet a few other characters along the way, um, particularly Mrs. Litvak, played by Lynn Cohen, and I think she's amazing. Both Cohen and Davis's performances are spectacularly eerie. And I have to say, I feel like they should have been at least nominated for more awards than what they actually were. Maybe the film just hasn't had the reach, but their performances were brilliant. So I'm going to read the description from IMDb, maybe not all of it because it's quite long, and I don't want to give too much away. But the description from IMDb is as follows. In the Hasidic community of Borough Park, Brooklyn, a despondent young man, short on both faith and funds, reluctantly agrees to assume the responsibility of an overnight shimmer to fulfil the Jewish practice of watching over the body of a deceased member of the Orthodox community. And first of all, that's something I want to point out. I, My knowledge of the Jewish community and Jewish faith is not as good as it should be. I should be a bit more knowledgeable than what I am. So I really enjoyed the educational aspect. I'd never heard of the role of a shimmer. I didn't know that it was Jewish practice to watch over a deceased body, I guess, before it's buried. So that was really interesting and I really enjoyed learning about that and I thought that was really fascinating. However, there is also one other thing that really kind of threw me. There are certain characters in this, near the beginning, who talk in, I assume Hebrew, I completely apologise if it isn't, but either way they're talking in a language that is not English and there are no subtitles. I mean, there might be a way to put on the subtitles, but, you know, normally if you have a film where a character speaks in a language that is not the primary language of the film, there would be subtitles automatically put in. So I'm not really sure what the intention was with that. Because on the one hand, I think, well, maybe the non-English language is so that viewers don't necessarily know everything that's going on and it keeps it suspenseful. But I feel like a lot of people watching this would also be able to understand that. So that would throw that theory out of the water. So I thought it was a little bit of an odd choice and I don't really understand what they were going for. All they needed to do was put on subtitles or explain why. But once, you know, that's all part of the beginning bit, which is very boring. And I didn't really care about that. Once, once Yakov kind of becomes the shimmer and... He gets to watch over the body quite quickly. It picks up pace. Now, this is about an hour into the film. It's about an hour and... It's an hour and a half. And it takes a good, maybe 50 minutes to actually get anywhere. But once it kicks in, it is eerie. The weirdest things happen. This is certainly a psychological horror. I genuinely thought it would rely on jump scares. And it does not. There may be one or two. But for the most part... It will make your mind want to throw up, particularly once it gets to the phone call from the doctor. From that point onwards, until about ten minutes before the end, it's gripping, it's non-stop, it's intense. The sound effects are amazing, the performance is spectacular. It's a little bit too dark in times in terms of lighting or lack thereof. Sometimes I felt like I was straining to see what was happening. But I guess that just all adds to the effects. The ending, as I said, the last kind of 10 minutes were really dull. Um, I'm not going to say what happens. Maybe you'll enjoy it. But for me personally, I just didn't think it was very good. The message that it's trying to deliver, or what I, the message that I received from it, I'm not going to explain. I won't spoil anything. But I will say that it's unlike a lot of horrors where things are just creepy. This one actually looks at the mind of Yakov and gives us an an alternative explanation for why these things could be happening. So you can either subscribe to the belief that this is all in his head, or you can subscribe to the belief that these things are actually happening and it is an actual real threat. And I love it when a horror or a thriller does that because it gives us the choice. It gives us the power to believe what we want to believe. 
and that makes it even more terrifying. So when it's scary, it's very scary. It's fantastic. It is so good. It does it phenomenally well. When it's bad, it's really dull and not very good. We made a bunch of characters at the very beginning for the first 10 minutes and they're boring and dull and not good in the slightest, underdeveloped, pointless, don't need to be there. Dave Davis basically performs a one-man show with some input from Lynn Cohen as Mrs Litvak. It is really, it's definitely worth powering through. I wouldn't say skip ahead to like 40 minutes. I'd say stick with it so you get some character development. But just don't worry if you're bored really early on. It does get better. I'd love to know what you think of it. I'd read a lot about it in the film magazines I'm subscribed to. And the bits that were good surpassed my expectations. So I think that kind of makes up for it.